underneath. And you can see the cutout right here in the in the um, oil pan. In the oil pan, the exhaust will shoot out there. Right now, we're finalizing the exhaust, but we think we're going to shoot it out. Very much like the, the Corvette right there. Uh, the side, the shot, and the on the side. All right, that way it doesn't flutter up the underside. Yeah, and if you look at the underside, we've, we've still got to do the final design on the underside. The underside needs to have a full bottom of belly pan so that we can get no air movement whatsoever across the bottom and no trimming effect. The front end will be right here. Shoot it out on the right side, then on the exhaust. It's going to be on the right side, yeah. So how much was... Uh, Easy oil change is a consideration. It was one of the main yeah. design features. And if you look, the oil filter is literally right on the front. Okay. That was the main design feature. Uh, and when we looked at the oil, the, uh, the pan itself for the plug, the first original design was just a drop down, but then because of the underbody bracketing and because of the ease, we didn't want this to be the lowest part of the engine. So we actually embedded it inside here. And so on the new oil pan, it actually shoots out the side. If you look at like a lot of the Nissan designs, um, some of the Honda designs, they just shoot right out the side. It just makes it so much easier because that's the lowest point and it drains everything. Well. Okay. So. And another important question, what is straight pipes going to sound like out of this engine? It'll sound goofy because <laughs> it's a three-cylinder. <laughs> but, I mean, there'll be a lot of work, I'm sure, from the aftermarket guys that uh, you, know, you can do different tuning for the exhaust sound. With a long length of the pro like that, you can do some crazy tuning from it. So there'll be all kinds of stuff. I mean, I guess the biggest thing is, and I know that the vehicle is very, it's being, uh, shown and, and there's a lot of interest from the motorcycle fans, you have to remember this is an automotive engine. So from an automotive standpoint, that's what it was designed around. It's not designed around a motorcycle. Right, a motorcycle engine spins at 15,000 RPM. This is not going to spin at 15,000 RPM. I think right now, Red Line, we're shooting for I think 65, 67 right now from that standpoint. Um, we'll see how far we want to push it to go forward. Um, so it's literally, you know, and I, I try to put this out in all the tech talks, you know, all the tech talks that have come out on the engine. I, I've written all of those. So you do the blog posts? So I do all of that for, for the Yu-Gi-Oh guys and stuff. Cool. Um, you know, the, I work for IAB, this is my company. This is another one of my colleagues, Lyman, he's doing all of the oil fans and stuff as well. Um, and, you know, the engine was designed for a highway fuel economy. That's what it was designed for. And very, very cheap. That's literally was our design criteria as much as we can. The other one that was a slight secondary was lightweight. So you'll see the whole engine is aluminum. And I know there's lots of people who are saying, oh my gosh, the aluminum and the new spray technology. You gotta remember, man, the new spray technology that's going out there, every single Ford, every single Chrysler, everything GM that's coming out in the next five years, it's all gonna be spray board. None of this liner stuff anymore. It is modern technology, it's out there, it's proven. That's why all of the big guys do it on their high horsepower engines first to prove it. If it can last in a high horsepower engine, it's gonna last in a general automotive. So it is very well proven incident. Uh, the fact that Kamau's on board and is excited to be able to do it, tinker a little small engine like this, awesome. I mean, if you look at, we've benchmarked, I don't know, probably four or five of the different engines that we've benchmarked. The benchmark engines that we've had, we've done the smart benchmark, we did the Metro, we've looked at the new Ford, the uh, one liter Ford block, uh, the Fox engine on that. Right? When you look at the design, it is so similar in so many aspects, not because we copied it, just because we, when we were doing all the design work, we do a benchmark comparison to make sure that you're not out in left field or anything like that. And they are all very similar from that standpoint. Do you have any idea what kind of uh, RPM you're going to be running at road speed? So right now, our target, it, it depends on, on finally... We did a full investigation study for the highway cycle, again, because that's what we're trying to use for the fuel economy. And the highway drive cycle right now, we're following with our gear ratio, um, I think it's 2,000 RPM. No, no, it's 1,500 to 2,000 RPM, depending on where you are on the cycle. So, which is right where you want to be for the sweet spot of the engine. So, say a 60 mile an hour, what could be? I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's, it's somewhere around 15 to 2,000 RPM. Low revving. Low, very low revving. That, the, the island of the sweet spot.
spot to be as the uh, specific fuel consumption of the engine. That's what we're really targeting for. We're trying to keep that engine running at that optimal island all the time in the sire drive cycle. So we're looking for between 15 and 2,000 for the optimal. Somewhere around there. So like, so the compression ratio, um, the compression ratio is a really higher compression ratio. You do a compression ratio so you don't have the, 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 the losses on the throttling. You can actually open the throttle a little bit more to allow no losses on the throttle. So it's kind of a deep throttling activity and it's a lot more efficient running at a higher RPM. That being said, you get into a knock region where your engine will misfire or knock. So on the back side, we'll actually have Again, with modern engines, there'll be a knock sensor on the back side of the case. We actually have three catches in the block right now. We've got to do the fine tuning of where the knock sensor is located. It's going to be. That's one mitigation. It takes regular fuel. It's going to take regular fuel. We didn't want to do a high octane fuel. Um, if we were to do a high octane fuel, we'd boost the compression rate down here more. What is the compression ratio now? Right now, we're targeting about 10.5 to 1. We're going to see if we can press it up to 11. Um, and go from there. I think the latest, I think the engine we're building is 10.5. 10, I think it's the last one that Yash ran was that. So that's from that standpoint. That's one thing. The other thing is um, we know we need to have some performance in acceleration. So this is only a single head cam. Again, from a cheapness of design, there's no cheaper solution anywhere, even if you think of a push rod, than an overhead cam. One single overhead cam, and that's what we've done. So, to be able to get some performance, but also to do a, a really light load or a very low lift kind of region, we actually did a two-step approach. So on the cam, there'll actually be two intake valves, or two lobes on the intake port. And the way that you switch in between which lobe that you're gonna run is the tappet. So the tappet sits on top of the valve stem itself. That tappet actually has a, a hollow point into it, and you can switch a pin in and out and the tappet will allow it to either ride on the outside or it'll ride on the inside as solid one. So it'll kind of, you can switch which ones it'll ride on. The technology's been out there for the last seven years in Porsches. It's called the Varial Lift System. It's also very similar to the, Ford, the Honda system, uh, the VVT system that they run off of that. Um, our company actually has part of the patent on it, and so we were able to use it from a company named Scheffler. Nina Scheffler is actually going to be producing the tablet. So it's, you can, it, it'll be controlled off the computer, and on the back side, there's an actual uh, a hydraulic tappet or a hydraulic control valve that will control the tappet. So you actually have two intake lobes on the same cam, and it's a, a variable. It's a, it's a form of a. We call it a. It's a two-step cam system. Is what we call it. So that'll give you kind of a high lift load for performance when you want to have a lot of horsepower to get in. And then we'll switch over in a fuel economy mode to do the low lift load. Again, with not a lot of air going in, only enough air to be able to push the engine through the vehicle through the highway cycle. You reduce a lot of the throttling effect on the throttle body. Because it's all electronic throttle body, it's all computer controls to be able to handle that. So that's one of the other really uniquenesses. Um, we did a lot of study on the, the friction losses as well. Um, there was a, I can't tell you how many depth discussion about the, the, the uh, chain drive system. We, we strongly, strongly considered going to a belt, a belt drive system, uh, a wet belt system. But what ended up winning out was the reliability of it. And uh, so we ended up going with the chain. The fact is, if we were to go to with a belt drive, the friction is is, very, is a lot different, it's a lot less in the belt than if you go to a chain. So we ended up going with the chain just for more of the durability and reliability. So, again, trade offs that you do when you're doing the development of that system. Um, but a lot of, we did some offsets of the piston slightly off of it. Uh, the pin is offset. You're talking millimeters, but those millimeters cause different forces to happen during the compression and the power stroke. And each one of those are slight friction reduction reduction technologies that are kind of designed into the So uh, the water pumps of or the uh, oil pumps of G-rotor pump, it's very similar uh, pump design. We did it because it's efficient um, and it's a cheap one. Uh, you can get you know different 
variable oil pump designs, you start adding money when you're doing the variable pump design. What else is driven off the, off the drive shaft? Everything. Everything's off. Yeah, so on this side, they got it locked down. On this side, I was just telling you, you can see where the water pump comes in here. There's actually a multifunction bracket that sits on it. It's all also the water pump housing. And then what it sits on it, the, the alternator sit up here, the um, AC compressor sits down to the bottom, and then the starters are plugged into the back. Everything ran off the front PM. Um, yeah, we didn't want to have two separate shift systems for that. It doesn't make sense. The belt is uh, in production right now. It's a, it's a standard link. All of the pulleys are standard link. Literally, we pull those off the shelf. Um, it has a front damper. We've got a, a hydraulic damper in the front with the vibrations on that. The other thing that we'll be doing is this big block out here. We'll actually have an EGR cooler. So that's probably some new technology that's out in there. We'll actually have a cooler here that will run into the water system up here. And that cooler will draw exhaust gas straight off of the, off of the exhaust system. It'll go through the cooler, so we'll pull it down, and then we're going to dump it back in here. If you want to run exhaust, if you want to run EGR in here, try to reduce your compression ratio, your volumetric efficiency actually uh, increases as well. And so that also is it's an emissions target as well. Again, it's all for pumping losses to try to get it in efficient engine. So it'll look kind of goofy, but if you look at like all of the new, um, pretty much all new engines have EGR on it. The EGR is probably the newest. A lot of the new, uh, the Toyota Tundra has it. The new Dodge Ram will have EGR on it as well. Again, it's a it's a highway fuel economy improvement technology going, and it's fairly cheap in that aspect. So we're gonna have EGR. And each of cool DTR systems as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you bet.